Are you kidding me? Evan Ingram? Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. So check it out. The D6 Squad has merch now. We got hoodies, tees, mugs, whatever you need. Check it out. Link in the description. What's going on, YouTube? Diggy546. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. So today I wanted to talk about uh, the Giants playoff hopes and the Pro Bowl rosters came out and I got a lot of questions about this Pro Bowl roster. The Giants are a game out of first place. The Washington football team is obviously still in first place. They are actually a game ahead. And if we end up tying them this year, we're in the playoffs. If not, then we're missing the playoffs. And actually right now, I think with tiebreakers, we're actually behind Dallas. So if the Giants lose out, they're probably gonna be third place or fourth place in this division, which would be hilarious because two weeks ago we were beating the Seahawks and on top of the world. Now all of a sudden we could finally, we could actually be in fourth place. That just shows you how bunched up these NFC East teams are together that who knows, man, Jalen Hurts, maybe he gets on a high streak. To be honest, out of all these teams, Jalen Hurts interests me most as far as, you know, seeing one of these teams in the, in the playoffs with how well he's playing. He's playing better than any quarterback in the NFC East. But that's a whole different story. That's a whole different video. The Giants right now are in a downward spiral. DJ got hurt. Colt McCoy was able to hold it down for that one week when the defense played tremendous, like one of the best defensive performances of the entire year. And he also got great contributions from Wayne Gallman. I think he had like a 60-yard run. So Colt McCoy can only do it for so long. 103 yards that first time, efficient. He threw an interception, but other than that, he was pretty efficient. Last night, he was efficient again, but he actually was able to take some shots. Freddie Kitchens showed some confidence in the Giants offense. And he actually took some shots down the field. What do you know? What do you know? So I really want to see that from Jason Garrett. I want to see it from whoever the offensive coordinator is for the Giants next year. I need a mind in there. I know Joe Judge says we're not some offensive guru scheme. We're not going to try to outsmart you. He didn't necessarily say that, but he said it's, it's not about a guru scheme. It's about the, the mindset that you're coming in there with, which I'm all behind. But we need someone who can scheme some of these receivers open because it's been it's been a problem. And we need someone who's actually going to let their quarterback take some shots down the field. And Freddie Kitchens actually sent Evan Ingram down the scene. Have you seen that? Evan Ingram actually was able to get down the seam, go up and use his body, go get his height up there and snatch the ball out of the air and on the seam route. Now, I'm not saying Evan Ingram is some great tight end because he's obviously let us down over and over and over again this season. But it's just nice to see him finally get used to his strengths. He had another ball in the end zone that it got swatted away from. Him. He never really had a chance at that. But if the ball gets thrown towards the back of the end zone, that's an easy touchdown for Evan Ingram, assuming that he catches the ball. But it just shows that Freddie Kitchens was able to utilize not only the offensive play, uh, the players, but also the playbook that Jason Garrett came up with. He was able to call a better game than Jason Garrett. So that really shines the light on Jason Garrett and says, you got two games. Daniel Jones may or may not play in these last two games. I'm gonna need some production. Because right now they're the second to they're the second to worst offense in the league. And the Jets were trying to tank until they finally messed it up yesterday. So we need some kind of progression. We need to see something different because obviously your method is not working. The Giants don't have the best receivers. They don't have, you know, they don't have a bona fide number one guy, number one target. But come on, you got enough weapons to be able to utilize them to their strengths to where you're at least, you know, a middle of the pack or at least the second half of the league, not a bottom two offense in the league. These next two games, if Daniel Jones plays, are gonna be an audition. Even if he's injured, it's gonna be an audition for Daniel Jones. This is, I mean, this is it. He's got a chance. If he can win these next two games, we're in the playoffs. I don't think Washington is gonna win their next two games. So if we can win their ne our next two, we're in the playoffs. So these are two big games for DJ if he plays. If not, then we'll see him next year and we'll have to get him some weapons. The Giants need to come out of this offseason with, I, I think we need two weapons. 
Now that could be a tight end or a receiver, that could be two receivers, but we need two weapons because Darius Slayton has proven that with the banged up, he's banged up. Uh, he looked pretty good yesterday, but he's obviously slower than what he usually is. He's banged up. Uh, he he couldn't get enough on you know running that deep route when DJ threw it to him a couple of weeks ago. If that's a healthy slate and that's a walking touchdown, but since he was a step slower, the ball was a little bit too far for him. So we need two weapons because we're going to have to replace Tate because there's no way he's coming back. And then we need uh, a number one game-changing type of receiver or game-changing type of tight end. I'm looking at Devontae Smith. I'm looking at Jamar Chase. I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at a lot of guys. Kyle Pitts. We, we can use a lot of help at the receiver position. That's the number one need that the Giants need. And I just hope that Joe Judge isn't following the New England model. And I hope that Dave Gettleman isn't doing what he did in Carolina and completely ignoring the fact that you need people to throw the football to. You need people who can get open. You need people who can make plays that are above the numbers. It's 2020. It is not 1963. And then looking at the Pro Bowl, there were a couple of surprises as far as the Giants go. First of all, can someone explain to me what part of this season Evan Ingram qualified as a Pro Bowl tight end? Can somebody tell me that? Why is Evan Ingram going to the Pro Bowl as a, as a, a first guy? He's the first guy going to the Pro Bowl. I mean, I know George Kittle got injured, but I would even put Gronk in there over Evan Ingram. I mean, five, 50 something catches, 500 something yards, and one touchdown. Does that look like a Pro Bowl season to you? And it just shows you how stacked the AFC is for how many good tight ends they have compared to the NFC because George Kittle goes out and Evan Ingram gets into the Pro Bowl. Are you kidding me? Evan Ingram? I don't get it, but Logan Ryan for most of the season was the leading vote getter in the NFC as far as free safety. Now, maybe the coaches and GMs, that kind of puts them out of there, but he was the leading vote getter from the fans as the free safety, and he ended up not making it. Now, probably, you know, people opt out all the time. Tom Brady ended up not making the Pro Bowl too, so you know people opt out all the time. He probably would have been an alternate. Logan Ryan probably would have been an alternate. Uh, Blake Martinez, who didn't make the Pro Bowl, which is insane to me. I don't understand that. Blake Martinez probably would have been an alternate. Uh, Leonard Williams didn't make the Pro Bowl, which I think is ridiculous, too, because anybody that's seen this Giants defense, he's been a, a factor. He's been a force all year. I don't see how he doesn't make it. And Jabril Peppers is another robbery. I know Buda Baker's having a great year. But Jabril Pepper should have been in the Pro Bowl this year. There's no reason that both of these safeties that we have should not have been in the Pro Bowl this year. I think that's an absolute travesty that they didn't make it. And I think it's an even bigger travesty that Evan Ingram, Evan, Ing the guy who lost this, single-handedly lost this a game and probably lost this a couple of other games with some of the turnovers that he had, fumbles, uh, drop passes in key situations, drop passes that go to interceptions. How does he make the Pro Bowl? I don't get it. But you guys let me know what you think of the Giants' playoff chances. Let me know what you think of the Pro Bowl. And should Evan Ingram have been in the Pro Bowl? We all know the answer. If you're going to put Evan Ingram in there, you might as well put Wayne Gallman in there, man. So if you made it this deep into the video, I'm calling you a D6 squad member. If you're a D6 squad member, you got to hit that subscribe button. You got to turn on that notification bell. And listen... I make all kinds of content for NFL teams. So if you're not a Giants fan, don't worry. I'll cover your team. If I'm not covering your team, let me know and have a good one.